need your help this morning. Thanks for joining us all the way in the back. Lift your voices for Jesus.
God who was sent is sent shall be
Sing it again. Lift your voices. Can you feel his heart? 
with praise right now.
Well, this morning I'm going to have you uh, do a little reading with me. Would that be okay? We're going to talk about the favor of God. How many of you believe in the favor of God? How many of you believe you can walk in the favor of God? How many of you believe we need the favor of God on our life? Well, let's see what the Word of God said. This is Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. Read with me. Here we go. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. That sounds good, doesn't it? God is surrounding us with his favor. Now, this is Psalm 119, verse number 58. Read with me. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. Now, both of those include the favor that you and I can have. So we're going to talk about that this morning. Let, let's uh, pray together. Father, thank you for your amazing word. The power of your spirit, Lord, we just feel your presence today, and God be with us in Jesus' holy name, amen. You may be seated, turn to your neighbors, I'm glad you're here today. Well, favor is mentioned all through the word of God. Let me just give you a definition. We have favor, we have grace, we have acceptance, and matter of fact, the same word that appears as favor also appears several times as grace, because grace is what? The unmerited favor of God, and we need the favor and the grace of Almighty God. When you trace the origin of the word back, it means to bend down, to stoop down, to help. You know, I, I can't really get up to his level, but God can stoop down to my level and help me. Uh, about two or three weekends ago, we were in Oklahoma City. Our kids live up in that area, and I wasn't here that weekend, so Carrie and I went up to spend some time with the kids and the grandkids. That is always a wonderful time. It's always a very exhausting time for me. Uh, I usually have to take a nap after that, but... Uh, as we do, we, uh, we usually take something up. Carrie usually takes clothes. We have toys and gifts and different things. So we, we go up. We spend Friday with Matt and uh, Stephanie and Hartley. And then Saturday went over to see Aaron and Natalie and Riley and Ian. And so we had some things to take to them. And they knew we were coming. So as we drove up in the driveway, there's two little faces pressed against the glass door waiting for Papa and Cece. And... So we go in, and my, my arms are loaded, and, and so little Ian comes up, and he grabs my leg and says, Papa, Papa, and he's wanting me to pick him up, but my hands are full. So finally, when I got in loaded with the stuff, I reached down, and I picked him up, and I brought him up to my level. And how many of you know that's sometimes what God does to us? He reaches down to our level, and he picks us up, and he embraces us because he loves us. And let me tell you why Riley and Ian and Hartley love Papa because Papa loves them. Yeah. Let me tell you why you have favor. If you're taking notes, here's number one. Why do we have favor with God? Because he just loves us. God loves you with an everlasting love. Many of you, you've heard the story, and maybe you've read the story, and you're familiar with the account of when Israel left Egypt, the land of bondage, and they're headed to the promised land. Now, they had to go through a lot of territory. You know, they wandered for 40 years. And as they go, they're going through different places and different people groups are there. Well, one group that, that was there when they traveled through were the Moabites. Say that with me, the Moabites. I don't hear much about them anymore, but the Moabites were there and their king is the king called King Balak. And they didn't want them in their territory. They didn't want them in their land, even though they were just passing through. They had heard what God had done to the Egyptians. They had heard about God parting the Red Sea. Now they're fearful because the people of God now are at their front door going to pass through. So what Balak does, he hires a prophet, a diviner, a soothsayer, if you will, to come and curse the people of God. And so there's a lot of money involved here. So he hires this guy by the name of Balaam to curse God's people. So picture in your mind, here's the interchange, here's the request, here's the money being you know, transacted here. So what happens is Balaam goes and he gets up on a high place and he's looking over this vast people, the people of God, and he is hired to curse them. But this is what Balaam said. He said, I can only say what God has me to say. So I want to give you just some of the words, this is not all of them, but some of the words that Balaam spoke over the children of God. Here we go. How can I curse whom God has blessed? God has blessed and I cannot reverse it. 
The Lord God is with Jacob. He sees no wickedness in Israel. The shout of a king is among them. He has strength. There is no sorcery or divination that can be used against them. This people rise up like a lion ready to devour its prey. How lovely are the tents of Jacob. His king shall be exalted. He shall consume the nations and all his enemies. Blessed is he who blesses you, and cursed is he who curses you. Now Balak, the king of Moab, he's furious because he hired him to curse them, and everything that came out was what? Blessing. Now I love the first line. How can you curse whom God has blessed? How many of you know you're blessed? Because you're a child of God. Now I want to give you just a, a remnant of this story found a few days later, this is in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 23, verse 5. Now, Moses is saying, The Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, but the Lord your God returned the curse, turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. So, why did God do, do that? Because He loves you. How many of you know God cares about you? And He cares about me. Now, the second reason we can have the favor of God is for mission and purpose. Say that with me, mission and purpose. So God has you on a mission. He has you for purpose. It may be in your school, maybe in high school, junior high, could be on the job, could be in missions, could be right here on staff, it could be among your family. You have a mission that you're on for God. Many years ago, I was uh, going to Mexico for a mission trip. Been there a few times, and this time I'm going to the southern part of Mexico, and I'm flying from the United States into Mexico City. The, uh, uh, let me give you the Benito Juarez Airport, Mexico City. Now, Mexico City has almost 10 million people, and there's like 22 million people in the environment, just the suburbs of Mexico City. So here I am, I'm flying into Mexico City, I have a tight schedule, got to connect planes, I've got to meet uh, someone there, uh, Dr. Dale Yurton, who's going to meet me in Mexico City, we're going to get on another plane, we're going to fly down by Guatemala uh, on the Mexican side, and we're going to spend a few days, about a week, in ministry there. Now, I'm coming on an international flight to a foreign country, I have to go through customs, now let me tell you, I speak no Spanish other than taco, burrito, stuff like that. <laughs> so I, I, I've got to connect there. I don't know if you've ever went through customs in a foreign country, but it can be pretty treacherous. Here's a picture of what the airport looks like when you go through customs. Hundreds of people flying in from all over the world, a lot of uh, you know, Hispanic people, native Mexicans that have been out of the country, they're coming back to the country. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in that group. And, and, and you, you know that not all air flights are on time. There are delays. So I'm trying to get through customs. And I'm in line with hundreds of people. And let me tell you the thought that goes through my mind. I'm not going to make this next flight. I'm not going to meet Dr. Yurton because there's no way I'm going to process through this many people in this amount of time. So this is on my mind. I thought, Lord, if I'm going to get there, you're going to have to help me. God is my witness. I'm in line. There is a lovely Mexican lady who is from Customs. She comes up to me in this group, and she says, Sir, we're starting a new line. Would you like to get in the new line and everybody follow you? I said, Yes, I would. So she takes me to, to another little booth, show my passport, get it stamped. And, and I have to go through. They have to look at your luggage. I get out of that. I meet Dr. Yurton in the airport. This is what he says to me. He said, I'm glad you got here. You were almost late. We're going to miss our flight if we don't. I said, you don't know how late I was almost, uh, you know, through this whole process. You know what that is? That's the favor of God. I believe you can have that same kind of favor in your life. Now, why? Because you're on mission, you're on purpose for God. Now, you say, well, what if I'm not on mission, not on uh, a purpose for God? Listen, you could have that, but it's much more uh, available to you if you're walking in the mission of God, if you're doing the purpose of God. Uh, Pam was in the early service this morning, and I said, uh, Pam, I'm going to tell a story about your mom and dad today. And she said, interesting, today is the anniversary of my dad's death. I said, that is interesting, isn't it? In Mexico again, 
Dorothy and Grady, they were flying back to the United States, and they're getting ready to board a plane. Now, if you've ever been in a foreign country, not every airport connects you through the ramp into the door. Sometimes you've got to go across the tarmac, go up the steps, you know, get in the plane. Well, somehow, they had lost their boarding passes. And you cannot get on the plane without a boarding pass. So they're ready to get on the plane. They cannot find their boarding passes. You know, he's looking, she's looking. Whose fault is it? You know, that can be a marriage problem. I'm, I'm just going to tell you. So they don't know what happened to the boarding passes. And Grady says, let's get in line. Let's see if we can get on the, air, on the airplane. So they, they, they leave the airport. There's a short walk across the tarmac uh, to the steps leading to the plane. And they said, we're about three or four people behind. People are giving their boarding passes, and there's a stewardess there at the steps taking the boarding passes. As they, All of a sudden, a big gust of wind blows across the tarmac by the airplane, and several boarding passes are blown out of people's hands, and they're fluttering down the runway. And when they got there with no boarding passes, the steward says, oh, that's okay. Some people had them blown away. Just go ahead and, and get on the plane. How many know that is the favor of God? You need the favor of God. I need the favor of God. Let, let me tell you why. Because there's things I cannot do in my own strength, my own knowledge, things I cannot pull off, and God has to come and help me. And God has to come and help you. So this is thematic through the, the Bible. Let me read something. This is Luke chapter 1. If you want to turn there, you can. We'll put it up on the screens. Now, this is the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy with John the Baptist. So she's pregnant first. Uh, so we're, we're going to have the Messiah being born. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. What's happening to Mary? She's on mission to give birth to the Messiah. And guess what she has to have? She has to have the favor of God in her life. Whenever you're on mission, whenever you're on purpose, then God can put the favor with you so that you can accomplish what he sent you to do. Can I hear an amen to that? You know, when Stephen is given his apology in Acts chapter 7, he refers to Joseph, and, and this is not only found in Genesis, it's found in other places in the Bible. Do you know Joseph walked with favor? He, he walked in the favor of God. Matter of fact, the first story that we see about Joseph. The, the first account is Joseph is wearing favor. Think about this. He's wearing favor. Have you ever heard the coat of many colors given by his father? Because his father what? Favored him. And he's wearing favor. Not only is he wearing the favor of his earthly father, I'm going to tell you, he's wearing the favor of his heavenly father. Because when he's sold into slavery, he ends up at Potiphar's house in Egypt, and Potiphar gives him favor because he's running all of Potiphar's estate. There's a line in the Bible that said the only thing that Potiphar understood is what was set before him because Joseph handled everything else. But, obviously, he got in a little bit of trouble, right? Because Potiphar had a hot of her, and she, she accused him of a sexual advance, what he did not do. Then he goes to prison. But in prison he had favor. Because after a while, what's he doing? He's running the entire prison. And then he gets favor by someone who's in prison. He appears before the Pharaoh. God gives him favor with the Pharaoh of Egypt. Now he's running the entire country of Egypt. How many of you know there's favor, there's favor, there's favor, there's favor? Why? Because Joseph is on a mission. He's called for a purpose. He is going to keep the seed and the bloodline of the Messiah alive by feeding that family in his position in Egypt. There's favor there. When you're on mission for God, when you have a purpose, God can give you favor. Here's the third thing. When we live within the parameters of God's love and when we live in God's word, it brings us 
favor. How many of you know that God has favor when you live in His Word and you live in His love? Now, when my grandkids come to my house, I love them. But at our house, at Pop and Cece's house, how many of you know there's some parameters? And God has some parameters. I want to say this, and I want you to take it with the, the love that I'm saying it. Some of you are struggling. Some of you are going to continue to struggle because you're not in the sweet spot that God wants you to be in. God wants you to be in a sweet spot. He wants you to love Him, and He's going to love you, but He also has parameters of the Word that He wants you to abide by. They're, they're the guardrails of your life. And if you get there, you're going to be in a sweet spot. It's going to be much easier for you and I to live in the favor of God if we are living in the parameters of His love and His Word. And sometimes the, the love of God is really exampled in the Word of God that disciplines us and brings us into accountability. Can I hear an amen? So we need to know what pleases Him. We need to know what displeases Him. So both are very important. Um, last week, I, I had the uh, opportunity to be at the hospital a couple of times, and so I went by the coffee shop and got Carrie's favorite coffee and went in to the volunteer and gave her the cup and said, would you take that back to Carrie? And so the volunteer took it back to her, and that happened twice. And listen, I'll take all the favor I can get in marriage. Uh, guys, let me say that again. Um, I'll take all the favor I can get in marriage. So the first time I did that, I, I went there in the, the area where you wait for surgery, and I gave it to the volunteer and said, would you take this back to Carrie? And as I turned to walk away, there were three women sitting against that wall in those chairs, and, and one of the ladies said, isn't that sweet? <laughs> and and I, I just remember, she said, isn't that sweet? Now, I didn't take coffee to everybody in the hospital because uh, I don't know everybody in the hospital, but I did do it to her because she has my favor. And listen, if you have God's favor, then some things will happen to you that may not happen to everybody else. How do you believe that? I mean, and that's just absolutely true. So we, we need to love what God loves. We need to hate what God hates. And this is what he said to the church at Ephesus in, in the first chapter, uh, I mean the first few uh, verses of Revelation when the Lord is uh, addressing the seven churches of, of Asia. So the first church that he addresses is the church at Ephesus. And he says, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. But then he says, and let me read it to you, you have this in your favor. You hate the practice and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now he doesn't hate the Nicolaitans, but he hates their doctrine and he hates what they're doing. How I many of you know God loves the world, but sometimes he hates what the world is doing? Now, that's not my opinion. That's what the Word of God says. So if I stay in the love of God and in the Word of God, the parameters of God, then the favor of God is going to come upon my life. This is Proverbs chapter 3. This is a chapter that many of you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. But let me read the verses that go before that. Verse 1, my son, do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Now these are the key words here. Let me just rehearse them. Teaching, commandments, steadfast love, and faithfulness. Let me say them again. Teaching, commandments, steadfast love, steadfast love, faithfulness. He said, let them find their way into your heart. And if you find them in your heart, let me tell you what it says, you will find favor and good success. Does anybody here want to have good success? Absolutely. He said, you apply these, let them go down in your heart. You're going to find favor with God and good success. Now, everyone can see this available to them, young people, old people, middle-aged people. You can have that kind of favor and success, he says, if you do these things. And most people want to have good success. And you never know when that favor is going to catch up with you or where it's going to manifest or how it's going to come. 
About six or seven years ago, I was going to buy Carrie a new car for Christmas, which is a little unusual for us because uh, if we usually buy a vehicle that's a little older, maybe 10,000 miles, 20,000, let somebody else take the hit of the new. But uh, I was going to buy her a new car for Christmas. That was going to be her Christmas present. So I went to the dealership and uh, deal with Gene, which I do pretty often. And uh, Gene's very honest, a nice guy. And and I said, Gene, I'm going to buy Carrie a car for Christmas, and this is what I want, this is what I want on it. And he said, well, Mike, let's do the deal. So we're in there at Gene's desk, and we're getting ready to do the deal. And all of a sudden, the owner of the dealership walks in. Now, he owns about four dealerships in the state of Oklahoma. And uh, so I'm in there with Gene, and, and I've known the owner of the dealerships ever since he was a kid. And he walked in, he saw me, and he, so he came over. He said, Mike, what are you doing here today? And I said, well, Randy, I'm buying Carrie a car. He said, good, let's buy her a car. So he took all the paperwork away from Gene. And he said, okay, let, let's write this up. Let's get Carrie a car. So he writes it up, and uh, he said, there you go. I said, well, did I get a good deal? He said, I made a couple hundred dollars off of you. So let me ask you a question. What are the odds... Me being there that day in the dealership, and the owner of the dealership walks through the door, takes the paper away, does the deal for me. That's the favor of God. Does anybody here believe in the favor of God? Can you believe that God would give you favor also? I believe that. Matt and Stephanie, I, I have little Hartley who's about five months old almost. And uh, if you've a new, new parent, you both work. And they both work up in Oklahoma City. They're both attorneys. And so now they're really concerned about daycare. I mean, they're going to turn their new little baby over to somebody they don't know, daycare. So now they're calling to get into daycare. And there's one place they want to get in. It's called St. Luke's, I think. It's kind of downtown. A lot of professional people work there. And so they call and they said, you know, could we you know, get in, and they said, there is a year and a half waiting list, a year and a half, and they're pretty discouraged, and let me tell you how I pray for my kids, and maybe you could start doing this. When I pray for my kids, I say, God, give me, uh, you know, just, just what I need to do to help my kids and, and to bless my kids, and God, give my kids favor with you and with men. If you don't pray that, you need to start praying that. God, give my family favor with you and with men. That's very scriptural. So I pray that. So about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago maybe, Matt calls me and says, Dad, the daycare called, said they had one opening, they'd let us have it. So from a year and a half, about a week and a half later, they get into that daycare. So last week was Hartley's first week in daycare that they thought that they couldn't get into. Favor of God. Listen, I'm talking to you about the favor of God. It's real. And you can have it. You, you say, well, what hoop do I have to jump through? I mean, what, what? no, listen. God gives you favor because he loves you. God gives you favor because you're on his mission. You're, you're on purpose here, and God can give you favor because that's what the Word of God says. Can I hear an amen? Now, here, here's the fourth one. God can give us favor when we seek wisdom. When we seek wisdom. Now, we're not talking about just book learning. We're talking about the wisdom of Almighty God. Now, this is Proverbs chapter 8. And, and ladies, I, I just want to tell you something very special here. When Proverbs 8 comes across in the Bible... Let me tell you, wisdom is personified here. So what we see is wisdom that is coming across like a person. So wisdom is personified, but here's the kicker. It's personified as a woman. I'll take what I, where I can get here. But this is true. Wisdom is personified as a woman. Listen as I read. Does not wisdom call, does not understanding raise her voice? Verse 12, I wisdom dwell with prudence and I find knowledge and discretion. Verse 33, hear instruction, be wise, do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. Whoever finds me finds life and obtains 
favor from the Lord. So when you seek his wisdom, guess what comes along with his wisdom? The favor of the Lord. Now, how do we get wisdom? Good question, Pastor. Glad you asked. We get wisdom from his word. We get wisdom from the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And we also get wisdom from experiences. Let me say that again. We get wisdom from the word. We get wisdom from the unction and the leadership of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to become what? Our teacher and our guide according to Scripture. And thirdly, just some good practical experiences will give you wisdom. So when you get that type of wisdom, guess what happens? You continually and more and more walk in the favor of Almighty God. Now listen, it's not just for us here, for those who are watching online. It's for every born-again believer, we can walk in the favor of Almighty God. And the more we learn, the more we experience, the more we're exposed to, that favor just comes more and more and more and more. Listen, you and I need the favor of God. We cannot accomplish this by ourselves. You're not that good. You're not that qualified. You need God's help, and it comes as favor. And grace is the unmerited favor of God. Now, here's the last one. Favor comes to you and I as we live a faithful and righteous life. As we live a faithful and righteous life. I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter 6. But I want to preface by saying this. Any righteousness we have is from God. You know that. There are none righteous, no, not one. But your righteousness and my righteousness comes from God. God imparts that. He imputes that by faith to us as we become believers. His righteousness becomes ours. We're walking in the righteousness of Almighty God. Now, as we understand that and as we embrace that, then what comes along with that is God's favor. This is verse 7. So the Lord said, I'll wipe from the face of the earth the human race that I've created. And with them the animals, the birds, the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I've made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Did you see it? Noah received favor because he walked in righteousness and he walked faithfully with God. So when you walk in righteousness, when you walk in faithfulness to God, what can you expect? According to Scripture, you can expect favor. Now, does that mean Noah was perfect? Not at all. If you read his story, he was less than perfect. But because he walked with God, he strove to be a righteous person. He wanted to be faithful. Guess what happens? Our faith is accounted to us, according to Scripture, as righteousness. That righteousness gives us what? Favor with God. The whole world is destroyed. Noah found favor and he survived. You and I can survive things that other people who don't have the favor of God cannot survive. I'll tell you why. Because of that favor. Now I don't know how important you think this is this morning. But I cannot really stress to you how important it really is. Because there's going to come a moment in your time... Uh, in, in, in your life and, and a time where you think, how in the world am I going to get through this? How is this going to come about? It could be in your marriage. It could be with the kids, the grandkids. It could be in finances. It could be with your health. It could be with anything. And all of a sudden, something shows up you didn't expect. Almost miraculously, you get through something. You get something. You, you process something. And you thought, how did that ever happen? Let me tell you how it happened. It was the favor of God. God supernaturally showed up and did something in your life that you could not do on your own. It is thematic through Scripture. When Peter's in prison and he is jailed, do you know there was a lot of other prisoners in that jail? But I just read in that account, only one, the chains fell from him and the doors automatically opened in front of him. Only Peter walked out. Why? Peter was on mission for God, and the favor of God was on his life. When I showed up at the hospital, only one nurse got a cup of coffee from me. When Joseph was in Potiphar's house and in the prison and with Pharaoh, 
Only one guy rose to that position. You know why? Favor of God. Only one virgin in Israel gave birth to the Messiah. You know why? Angel said it. You are highly favored, and don't be afraid, because God has given you favor. Could God be saying that to you today? Absolutely. Could you, in a moment of stress and crisis, and could it be today that you don't know Jesus Christ, and God has given you the favor of one more opportunity to turn your life around? And you may be here today and say, listen, I, I, I'm hearing you, and it seems like my life hadn't been going so good. Well, here's the good news. You can turn this thing around today by accepting Jesus, living in the parameters of his word, accepting his divine love for you, and things can begin to change in your life. Amen? I want you to stand with me, and we're going to begin and end the same way. We begin by you reading scripture with me. And we're going to end by reading Scripture again. Now let me set this up. This is Psalm 30. We're going to read together. But this is in the dedication of the house of David. Now some of us have been to Israel, and there is a, a section of Jerusalem called the City of David. How many of you know that? There, there's a section in Jerusalem called the City of David. For me to say David was perfect, you would all just smile at me. How many of you know David was ornery? He, he did some pretty rough stuff. He committed some egregious sins. Now this is, as we read, the dedication of the house of David. Listen to what he says. Would you read it with me? For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. I'm tearing up. All of us have felt that moment when we disappointed God. When we sinned, we, we knew better. But His anger only lasts a moment. But His favor, His favor, His favor lasts a lifetime. It's the favor of God. All of us here need the favor of God. Bow your head. We have some people going to come and help us pray. And I ask them to just step out of their pew and come and stand here. Those who are altar workers. This is going to be very short, simple, and sweet. If you don't know Jesus, you need to know Him. You need His favor. If you've wandered off, you need to come home. You need His favor. This morning, if you uh, are in a crisis, it could be you're sick. It may be that you're... Uh, having some problems at home. Could be marital problems. Maybe there's a wayward child. Maybe there's some financial issues you face. When you come up here today, no one will know what your issue is. But God's here to give you favor. He's here to give you favor. If any of those things strike a chord in your heart, if you need the favor of God today, would you... Just slip your hand up, because I'm going to hand my, hold my hand up. If there's a special area of your life right now you need the favor of God on, just, just raise it up. Matter of fact, I'm going to raise both of my hands up. I got some areas in my life I need God to just show me favor in. I need some divine help. If you raised your hand for any reason, I want you to just very quickly, courageously, Slip out of your pew. Just come stand right here. Come on. We're going to dismiss from right here. From the cascade section, the pews. Just slip up. We're going to fill this altar up for people who, who need the favor of God in their life right now.
going to come up here and stand. We're going to pray together. Don't know what you need. Don't know what your issue is. Don't know what your crisis is. But I know this. God can give you favor. Let me tell you, I, I feel this way down in my heart. I, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit today. I don't know what you're feeling, but I feel like God just wants to bless somebody, give somebody some favor today. I'm going to wait just for one more minute. I don't want to miss anybody. I don't want to miss anybody. This, this may be your breakthrough today. This may be the moment this turns around for you. This may be the time where God shows up that you didn't think he could show up. This may be the moment that this thing completely changes your whole life. You're going to wait. Don't miss it. Let me tell you one last story before we pray. The Lord showed up in Abraham's life. And Abraham said, Lord, don't pass me by if I found favor in your sight. You ever sang that old hymn? Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. That was Abraham's cry. If I found favor in your sight, please don't pass me by, Lord. If you'd like to help us pray, I need about 100 people to come and help us pray right now. we got people all over the front of this church. Would you come, lay your hand on their shoulder? Would you stand with them? Let's pray with them. Let's encourage them. I believe God's going to give them some favor today. God's going to give them a blessing today. The favor of God is falling in the house today. Come on, let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, for husbands and wives and fathers and mothers God for those who feel broken those who feel like they're in a struggle we pray for your divine favor rest upon their children their grandchildren rest upon their body let your favor of healing come God we love you we praise you let favor come Lord let favor come Lord turn this thing around for people hallelujah we bless you Lord Great is our God, and greatly to be praised. The favor of God, the blessing of God. Lord, we love you today. We love you today. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. What does anybody in this house believe in the favor of God? Let us leave by a confession, and this is not just a confession that uh, I want to just make up. I want to read that last line again. Hopefully you'll be back tonight. Cain, the musical group, will be in the house, so let's all show up, and I think we're going to have some guests. Their uh, song was number one on uh, K-Love. They're up for the Newcomers of the Year Dove Award, so they'll be here tonight. Psalm 30 and 5. If you want to read it with me, here we go. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. His favor lasts a lifetime. I'm going to believe that for me. And I'm going to believe that for you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. God bless you. I love you. Have a great rest of the day.